Hi, this is Bob with the Daily Connection from the Vineyard at Mount Comfort. Daily, my wife and I pray for our nation, our family, and for others. And the other day we were praying, and uh, we try to use scripture from time to time to uh, guide our prayers. And I said something that made me stop and think, where is that in scripture? And we're gonna go over those very briefly today. But it started me thinking that this is the time of the year when everyone starts exercising again because we can get outside and we get warm weather and walk without worrying about slipping and falling in the ice and snow. Oh, I don't go out in ice and snow. That's okay. But, you know, I remember this is the time we have to strengthen our core and do exercises so we can stand properly and we can walk properly. And then I, I thought about some scriptures, so we're gonna share that. The first scripture I'm gonna share with you is from Ephesians 6, starting at 13, very familiar to many of you. It says, therefore take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. And verse 14, stand firm therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And it goes on. Girded my loins with truth. Well, I started thinking about that. There are several things in scripture about truth. So let's look at a couple of those places where it talks about girding ourselves with truth. In Psalm 51, it has a very familiar uh, scripture again. You know, it says, create me a clean heart, O Lord. At uh, verse 6, it goes on and says, Behold, you desire truth in the inmost being. In the hidden part, you will make me know wisdom. You want truth in my inward being, in my core, in the core of my being. And I started thinking about what does core mean? Well, we have apple core, because that's the center of the apple. We have the core of a nuclear reactor. That's where the action happens. And then my wife and I started talking, well, where does the word core come from? Well, it comes from a Latin word that means basically heart. From the old English, it means heart or center. So we want to get to the heart of the matter. So God says he wants truth in our innermost being, in our heart. And if we have that truth in us, we get wisdom. Oh boy, I need wisdom. I need wisdom on how to pray for my family. I need wisdom on how to pray for our country. So what's part of the answer? To get more truth. And who is truth? Well, it's Jesus, of course. He's our truth. Well, as I love to do, I started looking up where is truth in, in scripture or where is how to gird around myself. It took me to Exodus 28. And in Exodus 28, it says this is talking about building the tabernacle in the wilderness and what the um, various items that the priest put on. Verse 4, it says this. These are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a tunic of checkered work, a turban, and a sash. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother and sons, that they minister before me. All these garments are help us to minister to the Lord. Well, the one of the words jumped out, a sash. Well, I've been in Russia, and they put on a sash that goes across the body when they celebrate a wedding or a birthday. They actually wear a sash for the person being honored. Well, I, you know, I thought a sash. Well, how does, how does the priest put a sash on? Well, some commentaries say that the sash is wrapped around from the waist to the chest, wrapped around many, many times. It's very long. Well, if God wants truth in my inward being, then he wraps us with his cords of love round and round. As I read the scripture over and over again, that's putting truth and girding my heart with truth. 
so that I would not be swayed one way or the other, but I would stay on course. Having done all else, we just read, stand. Having done all else, stay and have the wisdom that the Lord uh, needs. In Exodus 29, 9, there's just another quick reference here. It says, you shall gird, he's talking about the priest, you shall gird them with sashes and bind caps on them and they shall have the priesthood uh, as a perpetual statue. Again, the emphasis is that these clothes that the priest wore to minister unto the Lord had to be bound to them in some way. They just couldn't be thrown on. And uh, many times I'll put my coat on, my wife goes, oh, here, let me fix you because my collar's all out of whack and, you know, not in or out. But the Lord says, bind this carefully and wrap them with this, the sash. And it's binding with the cords of love. I think that is just awesome. So as we were praying for this person, we prayed, Lord, I pray that you would release your truth to them and it would bind them around their midsection, strengthen their core muscles to be able to stand. And the one person we've been praying for has very weak joints and, and it's very difficult for them to walk. So then what better way? Let them know the truth of the Lord and let it be bound in their center section so they can walk without falling. They can stand without being knocked off course. And as we listen to the various lies going on in news media in different ways, what is the truth? Jesus is the truth. And as we look to him, he binds us so that we will not be swayed to the right or to the left by what we hear because our eyes are fixed and focused on him. So I pray that the Lord would bind you with his cords of love and hold you steady and sure with him because what you are wearing before him is for holiness, for honor, for glory unto him. So the Lord bless you and may he help you to stand and receive his wisdom on how to live and pray. In Jesus' name, amen.